Spiders and Spiderettes, Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I have got something really special that I whipped up. This is what I call the Dream Catcher Shawl. And yes, I'm, I'm going to do the twirl for you. Absolutely love how easy this piece is. By the way, this video is sponsored by Lion Brand. Thank you very much, Lion Brand, for giving me this opportunity and for supplying the yarn for this project. The yarn for this project is Dotted Line, which I have a skein of it right here. And I did do an unboxing video and review for this yarn. This is the colorway of Blue Thunder. Mm -hmm. And actually, I needed about a skein and a half to two skeins for this entire project. Yeah, it's that easy. And I love it. It is perfect for the warm weather. It's not so much of a, a functional piece. It's more of a decorative piece. You know, dress up your outfits, wear something light and lacy and fun, and it's so easy. Yes, it's very, very easy. It's really quick. You can make it, I would say, in a, in a weekend, no problem. So, again, thank you very much, Lion Brand, and thank all of you for being here. I hope you like the video. And without further ado, let's get started. Hello again, my little yarn of wars and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again. And we are going to do today the Dream Catcher Shawl. Yes. And so for this project, I'm going to be using Lion Brand's Dotted Line Yarn. And Lion Brand did provide me with this yarn. Thank you very much. And so for the specs on this yarn, let's look at the label. It is 4.4 ounces, 410 yards. It is 100% acrylic. It is a weight of 2 now, the recommended hook size is a size F or 3.75 millimeter hook. However, because I do not follow rules very well, <laughs> I'm going to be using a larger size hook. Also, this is the colorway of Blue Thunder. Mm, love it. And uh, it makes me think of denim. And also I thought that this is a nice sort of dreamy colorway for our Dreamcatcher shawl. So the hook that I'm going to be using, hook size, it's not really that crucial to this project, but I'm going to be using a size J, six millimeter hook for today's project. You can, of course, use whatever works for you can't stress that enough, but this is what I'm going to be using. So if you want to duplicate the results, you can. Also, of course, the link to this dotted line yarn will be in the description box down below. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, round one. Going to start with our obligatory slip knot. Alrighty, and I'm going to chain four chains, one, two, three, and four, and then into the first chain, do a slip stitch to create a ring. There we go. So we have a little ring that we're going to work with. And now we're going to do a total of 12 double crochets around the entire way. What I like to do is I like to chain up two to give myself a little bit of height and then do my 12 double crochets into the ring. So I'm just going to go in to the center of that ring and I'm going to do my 12 doubles. So we've got the height and then we've got our first actual double there. So I'm going to do my 12. So that's one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten, eleven, and twelve. And of course, I like to double double count my my stitch count. So I've got two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. This is the the first one that we did right there. And then I'm going to do a slip stitch to the top of that first double crochet that we did to complete round one. We'll slip stitch like so. And then of course you can take your beginning tail of yarn, you can cinch it, and then sew in the later, you know, the end at a later point, whenever you like really. And so that is Round one. All right, round two, what we're gonna do is we're going to double all of our stitches from a total of 12 to 24 stitches. So to start, we're going to again, chain up two to give ourselves some height. And then into every double crochet, we're gonna do two double crochets. So going into this first stitch, right here with two doubles. And then into the next double crochet, two doubles. And so on and so forth. Just two doubles into each stitch. So at the end of this round, going to have a total of 24 double crochets. And then when you reach the beginning, going to do a slip stitch into this first double crochet that we did. And that will be the end of round two. So I'm going to do the rest of these off camera and I will meet back up with you. All right, round three. All right, now this actually is a, a pivotal round, believe it or not, as far as how you want your piece to look in the end. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do loops of a chaining of seven. Now, when I first tried this, I did, it was three chains and it was a much more closer, tighter mesh, if you will. It was a bit more substantial and it really is a matter of personal preference, believe you me. Um, you know, as far as if you want it more lacy or more, you know, close knit, so to speak, even though this is crochet, um, I'm going to be doing a chaining of seven. However, you can experiment, which I totally encourage, uh, to do a different chain number. But just be sure that when you are doing a chain number, you stick to that chain number for the rest of the project. But yes, I do strongly suggest experiment. Try something, you know, and you might be surprised and enjoy the results. But for right now, I'm going to be doing chain seven loops. All right, because seven's a lucky number and we want to have lucky dreams. So going to start by chaining up one and into that same stitch, do a single crochet stitch. All right, and then, like I said, I'm going to be doing chain sevens. So chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And yes, this is going to create a big loop, but 
I want this piece to be more decorative than functional, so I want big loops. You know, I want something dressy and snazzy. So into the next double crochet stitch, do a single crochet. So we have ourselves a big loop. Yep. And then we just did our, our single crochet. So now chain seven again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then single crochet into the next stitch, the next double crochet stitch. And it is, at first, it is a little bit fiddly, but as we go on, it will be, it will be a breeze. It, it, this project is going to fly by, trust me. So, chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Single crochet into the next double crochet stitch. Chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then single crochet into the next double crochet stitch. And so we're going to do this exact same thing all the way around. Now, you may be thinking, okay, all of these really big loops, they are really, really bunchy, you know, I mean, they're, they're huge, you know, what are we going to do? Trust me, this will work out. So I'm going to keep on keeping on doing my chain seven, single crochet, chain seven, single crochet, all the way around. And I will meet back up with you when I'm almost done so I can show you the, the final join. All right, I will be back. Alrighty, so I'm almost done with round three. I have this one last stitch here. Now I've got 22 of these loops on the edges here, and we need a total of 24. Counting is crucial, always. Now, so I'm gonna do my chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to go into that last double crochet right here and do my single crochet stitch. And then we need to do one more because we need 24, right? And that is where that first single crochet comes in to play. So I'm going to chain seven once more. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, now going to do a slip stitch into that single crochet that we did, like so. There. And so now, at this point, we should have a total of 24 loops. So you know me, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, and twenty four. Exactly what we need. Good. All right, so now I'm going to work my way into the chains of this first chain that we had made. I'm gonna work my way into the chains with some slip stitches in order to get closer to the center of this chain. So I'm going to go in and do some slip stitches. It doesn't have to be precise, just you can go into one of the loops, you can go into two of the loops, just slip stitch. So I got one, and then I'll do two, and I'll do one more for good measure, and then slip stitch a total of three of these chains 
okay? And it sort of works our way up a little bit. Now, you're not going to notice this in the long run. You're really, you're really not. You know, it, it's okay. You're not going to notice it. Not in the long run. You know, I mean, this is a busy pattern. Um, and then, last but not least, do a slip stitch into the ring itself. Slip stitch. So it cleans it up a little bit. Then chain one and single crochet. And that gets you to the, the top, the pinnacle of that loop right there. And that is the end of round three. Now, a lot of the rest of this project is going to be gravy, but in spite of that, I'm going to walk you through it. Mm -hmm. So let's go on to round four. Alrighty, so rounds four through nine, actually, are going to be the exact same thing. No increasing, no decreasing, no weird wonkiness. Nope, just rounds four through nine, the exact same thing. Yes. So that being said, going to get myself situated here. All right, so we are at the top. We are at the pinnacle, the apex, the tippy top of that loop. So from here, just chain seven. One, two, come on, two, <laughs> three, four, five, six, seven. And then quite simply, just do a single crochet into your next loop. Easy peasy. Chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And single crochet into the next loop. Chain seven. Four, five, six, seven. Single crochet into the next loop. Chain seven. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Single crochet into the next loop. Yes. So basically, you're going to be doing this all the way around. And then when we get to the beginning, this point right here, okay, I'm going to show you how to join. And at the end of this round, again, you should only have 24 of these loops okay, that we're now creating. But yeah, I'm going to show you how we're going to do the join from here to here. All right, so I'm going to work my way around and I will be right back. All right, so I have a couple of loops left. I mean, this is where we initially started. Now, what I might want to actually suggest to you is this first loop here, it is easy to miss it. All right. And, you know, as opposed to just going around and around in a spiral. No, we are actually working up. Um, so what I would perhaps suggest is take a scrap of yarn, perhaps, and, you know, put it into here and do a, you know, a, a loose loop or use a safety pin. Just something to mark this first loop. Nothing that, you know, is going to be permanently closed, mind you, because you are going to have to move it. Um, but yeah, let's do the next couple of loops, and then I'll show you how to finish round four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, single crochet. And we are where we started from. So I need to go from here to here, but I don't want to keep doing the, you know, the chaining up like we did here. There's an easier way. Now for me, it is a total of seven chains, right? Well, if we chain three, one, two, three, we then need four more chains, right? Well, if we do a treble crochet or a triple crochet, 
by yarning over twice and then into that single crochet, do a triple crochet or treble, it gives us the additional four chain length for a total of seven. And we are at the top. Yes, we are at the, the pinnacle. And that is exactly what we want. Yes, so that being said, from here, chain one, and then into this space here, do a single crochet. And we are very conveniently at the top of this loop. And that is the end of round four. So like I said, for rounds five, six, seven, eight, and nine, do the exact same thing. So to start five, going to quite simply, you know, we, we already have our single crochet there, right? So then just chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then single crochet into the next chain space. Chain seven, three, four, five, six, seven, single crochet into the next loop, and so on and so forth. Yes, and then so then, so then, so then, right? <laughs> you know, once we have done our single crochet into this loop here, you would then chain three and then do a treble crochet into this single crochet here, and then do your chain one and single crochet into that loop, just like we just did. So for rounds five, six, seven, eight, and nine, do the exact same thing. And yes, for, for this one, like I said, the numbers count and the round numbers, they do count. Now, yes, it does look like, well, hello. It does look like a very, very wavy kind of coral like mess at the moment. But because we're going to be doing a number of rounds that do not have any increasing, this will flatten out. Trust me. Um, I, I did do a number of prototypes and figured out, you know, very similarly actually to the, the pie formula for the, the knit shawl as far as you know, increasing and so forth. So this will flatten out. And then on round 10, let me just check my notes. Yes, on round 10 is when we are going to do another bit of increasing. But for the next couple of rounds, you are going to be just smooth sailing, no increases, no worries. It's all good. So I am going to do my next bunch of rounds off camera, and I will meet back up with you when we are ready to go into round 10. Alrighty. All right, my dears. So I finished up my rounds. I am up to round 10. Actually, I do have to do a slight alteration uh, where we finished round nine, but I will show you that. But as you can see, it flattened itself out very, very nicely. And it looks, yes, like a dream catcher. At least I think so. And so what we're going to do actually is to finish up round nine so that we can start round 10. Now, typically we would chain up three and then do a treble crochet into that single crochet. But because round 10 is going to be an increase round, we need to finish round nine a little bit different. A little, little, little bit different, and that's okay because it's just one, you know, one little stitchy stitch right here. It's no problem. It's okay. All right, so what we're going to do is to finish up round nine, I'm just going to do seven chains and then slip stitch to the single crochet on the other side to finish up round nine. So one, two, three, four, five, 
six and seven. And then, like I said, just do a slip stitch into the single crochet on the other side. And we're only doing this because round 10 is going to be an increase round. So I just wanted to clarify that. My bad. It's okay, though. You know, no, no real harm done. All right, so let's go on to round 10. Alrighty, so round 10 is going to be our increase round. Now, right now we have a total of 24 loops around the entire circumference, and we're going to be doubling all of those loops, very much like the pie shawl. And so our last stitch was a slip stitch to the single crochet, and we need to work our way over just a little bit so what we're going to do is we're going to do a slip stitch into that first chain. A little slip stitch into there. And then slip stitch into the chain space. So we just want to work a little bit away from the single crochet. Then chain up one and single crochet into the chain space. Alrighty. Now what we need to do is we need two chain sevens, okay, in this loop. Yes, we do. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Single crochet into the same chain space, like so. So we have a, a loop within the loop. Okay, then we're going to go on to the next loop. So it's it, it will effectively double all of our loops. So chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to go into the next loop. So I believe I misspoke myself by saying that there's going to be two loops within each loop, but there's a loop within the loop and then a loop between the loops. So it will work out to a total of 48 of these outside edge loops. And so just keep in mind where we actually started. And again, if you need to use the, you know, the, the safety pin method or what have you, that's totally fine. So let's just do a couple more of these. All right, so the last one that we did, it was crossing over. Now we need to do one within. So chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then going into the same loop with a single crochet. Chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, going into the next loop with a single crochet. Chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, going into the same loop with a single crochet. Chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, Yes, okay. Then going into the next loop. Chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Going into the same loop. Chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Going into the next loop. So it's same loop, next loop, same loop, next loop, same loop, next loop. All right, so just to show you, see we have two in the same loop, and then two in the same loop, and then two in the same loop, and then two in the same loop. And so we're just going to be doing, you know, the same deal all the way around. 
And then when we reach the beginning, I will show you how we're going to do uh, what we did similarly down here where we're going to be doing our slip stitches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way around and I will meet back up with you to show you how to finish off round 10. Alrighty. All right, so I'm almost done with round 10. I have 47 loops at the moment, but we need, of course, 48 for our numbers to be accurate. Not a problem. Let me just get my little loop in order here. And I'm going to show you the join because I like to be thorough. All right, so I just need one loop left. So yes, I'm going to do my chaining of seven. Now, thinking about it, actually, what I could do at this point is I could chain up three and then do my treble crochet into there. I could do that instead. Actually, let's see how that works. So one, two, three, and then do a, a treble into here. And then I would chain up one and then do a single crochet into there. Um, yeah, that works too, as opposed to having to do, you know, the various slip stitches up until we reach the top point. That works too. You know, I am not trying to confuse you. I am trying to make this easier for you, believe it or not. <laughs> All right, so right now, yes, I do have a total of 48 of these loops. Yes. And so, yeah, I mean, right now, this edge is going to be very, very roughly and very wavy. But what we're going to do uh, for the next bunch of rounds, it's just going to be, you know, hopping from one loop to the other loop and so on and so forth. Uh, and so let's continue on with round 11. Alrighty. All right, my dears. So rounds 11 through, let me check my notes. Yes, rounds 11 through 19. No increasing, no, no, nothing unusual. Just, you know, regular hip hopping, leapfrogging across rounds 11 through 19. So it's going to be the exact same thing that we have been doing. Now we have our join from the last round and we have all 48 of our newly formed loops, our chain spaces. So chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, single crochet into the next chain space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Going into the next chain space with a single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Single crochet into the next space. And so on and so on and so forth. And then when you have come full circle, no pun intended, um, and you have reached this one and you did a single crochet into this loop here, you would then do a chaining of three and then a treble crochet into this single crochet right here, okay? And you would then do a chain one, single crochet into that same chain space and just keep going around and around and around for rounds 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. And then round 20, again, we need to do another increase round. All right. So that being said, I am going to do the next bunch of rounds off camera and I will meet back up with you. Alrighty. Hello again. Alrighty. So I've been crocheting along and I'm almost done 
with round 19, and I am loving how this is coming out. Yes, I am. Very much like a dream catcher, which is kind of the, the point, really. Um, now, so to finish round 19, we are going to finish it up similar to how we had done previously. I just need to get my, my little loop in order here. Yep. And I didn't finish the last chain space, not yet, because we're going to have to do that join again, because we need to do, again, our increase for round 20. So what I'm going to do is, yes, I'm going to, and this is the, the last single crochet of round 19. So, you know, sort of as a, a refresher, a reminder, do your chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then do your slip stitch into the single crochet. Now, like I said, this is for the end of round 19. Okay, and then slip stitch into the first chain, like so. Slip stitch into the chain space, chain one, and single crochet into the chain space. All right, and then we can go on to round 20. Alrighty, round 20 is going to be our increase round. Now we have, at the moment, we have a total of 48 of these chain spaces, and we're going to double it, so it's going to get doubled into 96 chain spaces all the way around. So to do that, again, as a refresher, we have gotten, not quite in the middle, but we have gotten into it. So chain seven, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then single crochet into the same space. Chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, single crochet into the next space. Chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, single crochet into the same space, chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then single crochet into the next space, chain seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, single crochet into the same space, and then chain seven, go into the next space. So again, it is making sure that we have two in the same space, then hop over, two in the same space, then hop over, and then two in the same space, then hop over. And so we're going to end up at the end of round 20 with a total of 96 chain spaces. Yes. And uh, then after we get this round done, we will be in the home stretch for our shawl. Of course, it depends on how big you want your shawl to be naturally. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work all the way around and I will meet back up with you for the join and we will go for there. Alrighty. Alrighty, so for round 20, I've been stitching my way all the way around, making sure that I have all of my increases as they should be. And I already have 95 of these loops. I'm about to do my last 96th loop and now, I remember previously I said, oh, no, what we're going to do is we're going to do the chain seven and then slip stitch and then slip stitch to the top. Well, to avoid that, 
what we can do is chain three and then do our treble crochet into that first single crochet like so. Yep. And then going from here, of course, chain one, single crochet into that loop. And that is the end of round 20. Now for rounds 21 and up, we're just going to do in the, you know, regular fashion of, you know, from here, chaining seven, single crochet, chain seven, single crochet, chain seven, single crochet, all the way around, you know, and then when you reach this point here and you single crochet into here, well, again, you would chain three and then do a treble crochet into that first single crochet and then work your way up. Alrighty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the next 10 rounds or so, and I will meet back up with you. I mean, it really nothing's changed. It's just a matter of how many rounds you do and then where you put the increases. So I'm going to keep going and I will meet back up with you. Alrighty. Hello again. All right, so I kept stitching and stitching and stitching, and instead of doing just 10 rounds, actually, I went for 20 rounds because at 10 rounds, it just wasn't enough. It wasn't big enough. It was more of a shawlette kind of size. So I am about to finish round 40. Yeah, I just kept going in the same exact fashion, no increasing. I just kept going. And now, since I'm about to finish my very last round, this is my first single crochet of the round. And so in this case, because we're, we're finishing the project, we're not going to do another round. I'm going to do my chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then last but not least, do a slip stitch into that single crochet. Like so. Yep. And so now I can trim off my end and I can sew in my ends and it's as easy as that. Yeah. All right. So as far as size is concerned, of course, all of us are different sizes. You know, I mean, that that goes without saying you may need to make this piece even bigger. Honestly, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think that with what we've done, that this should be a sufficient size. However, what you will need to do, though, if you need to go even bigger than what we currently have after round 40, you would want to do another increase round and then continue on with your normal uh, way of going around and around and around with not doing any increases because it's a matter of increasing, you know, in a sort of exponential manner. So that being said, look at what we got. Oh, it's so gorgeous. It's so lacy. It's so lovely. And I really love how this yarn created rings with the colorway. I wasn't expecting that, but it did, and I'm really quite pleased. So it's sort of a, a denim -y kind of look with the dotted line yarn. And again, thank you so very much to Lion Brand for supplying this yarn for me and also for sponsoring this video. Thank you so very much for making this possible. And also, thank all of you, my viewers, for making this possible too. Thank you so much. And, you know, for more stuff, please do hit subscribe because I do try to post often, whether it's crocheting or knitting or my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games. You know, there's lots of good stuff for you to enjoy. And I really hope that you like this tutorial. And if you did, give a little thumbs up button down below because I appreciate your appreciation. Indeed, I do. And I think this would be a lovely piece for the warmer weather quickly approaching. And uh, yeah, so why don't you make one up? And until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, above all, stay stitching, and stay safe. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.